Hi there, welcome back to my vlogs. I've not done one of these for ages. Not quite sure why, because I really enjoy doing them. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about Goodnight Sweetheart. It came back, finally, after 17 years. Unbelievable amount of time. Uh, it's been away. And we all remember that the last time, the last episode was when... And, and I remember there was even going back as far as the big build, you know, how's it going to end? Gary got stuck back in 1945 after he saved uh, Clement Attlee's life. Um, and we always presumed that he'd be trying to find a way back. Uh, and obviously he settled into life in the pub. And then we revisit again when uh, obviously his son's grown up now in the middle of the swing in 60s. And Gary is just a pub landlord essentially, um, living life still red, just still around. I love it when the BBC remakes stuff because it's like going back to see an old friend again. I also love the way that they got a good plot line going quite quick. Uh, they didn't overdo it, which was good. Everything kind of worked. The, my favourite part was the way that they depicted 2016. And we almost, we have a technological evolution where things come out like the smartphone and we go, wow, that's really cool. And we start using it. Then 3G comes out and we go, oh great, we could kind of use internet on the move now and that, that's pretty cool. But we never really think about it as we go and then to have somebody, like, to have the character come back and from like 1990 to now and we see the difference, it's like, wow, you know, I was just starting university back then and te texting was like 10 p ago, remember that? Now it's like free most of the time because you have your contracted phone, I didn't have a contract phone, I pay as you go SIM card, you had to put those long numbers in, I mean... God, how long is it since we've done that? Um, so, and it was also it's great to see what the uh, what the what the actors are up to as well. And there's a funny one about this because Emma Amos's uh, Sivon, her um, her daughter, real life daughter, uh, I think she's I don't know how you say the name. I think it's Esme. It might be Esme or Esme. I think it's Esme. Her daughter, who will be I think about seventeen herself, um, certainly p portrayed that in in the in the show. And when she came on the screen, I was like, the casting's great. She looks just like her. Where have they found her from? And then, like, she did more of the scene. I'm thinking, that casting is great. I mean, that kid looks just like her. Like, you know, wow, that is good casting. And then, of course, it's her daughter, isn't it? So, you know, it shows what I know. Um, but it was quite funny. I remember thinking, when she first came on, I thought, she looks just like her. That's amazing. Um... Anyway, it's that, she must be really proud to see her daughter get on the telly and, and, and do that. That's really cool. And I'll probably tweet it at both of them because I've got them on Twitter. So they might well watch this. But yeah, I mean, that must have been a nice moment for, for the family, for them to see on the TV. Hopefully it leads to other things for her. Um, uh, I, I have been an extra myself on Vera for 10 seconds. My face was like... Uh, it wasn't the, <laughs> wasn't the most flattered angle, I've got to be honest, but... Um, yeah, so I've been on the box. I didn't actually watch it. I just got a bunch of people on Twitter going, have I just seen him on Vera? And I was like, yay. Got 50 quid for that. Um, so anyway, good night to you. Nicholas Lindhurst, my favourite actor ever. If he was like, if they just had him sitting on a chair looking at the space, I would watch it. I love him. Um, Only Fools, Good Night Sweetheart, Rock and Chips, uh, even New Tricks, um, everything that guy's in, you know, brilliant, brilliant, legend of um of british television so great to see him back uh did obviously a great job it's nice to see the actors because sometimes that one of the things that always fascinates me my favorite show was the brit ass empire years and years ago and obviously chris barry's gone on to do red dwarf he's done other bits and bobs but i always get really fascinated and i'm not like an internet stalker on this but i, I always get really fascinated as to what the hell do the actors do for money when when these shows finish because what i remember by being an extra i realized that by the time that show came on television that was like nine months after i'd actually recorded it gone down at the set and done all the stuff so i thought well all the characters will be like right that's done i'm going home now what do i do tomorrow so their kind of mindset is way moved on from from the tv show so it's kind of like it's a funny thing and i look at my favorite shows from years gone by like waterloo road I used to love Waterloo Road. I can't believe the candid BBC. Uh, I love that show. And I say, like, what do they do now? What are they? What are they doing? And they all seem to have loads to do. Like when you see them on Twitter, they're doing this, that. And I wonder, is it? Is it? Is their life really stressful and uncertain? Because I really value being 
semi-stable in full-time work, even though I much prefer a freer, liberal lifestyle. Um, but anyway, I'm digressing a little bit, but just kind of all those things, it's nice to see them back on screen. I really, 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 really hope they make another one because I think there's room for plot lines there. They've got the relationship between Gary and his daughter and she doesn't know or does she have a clue maybe that he might be... There's certainly a connection there that perhaps she can't explain. I think they need to clarify that because slightly worrying if your daughter says to just some stranger, do you want a lift? It's like, maybe that's not such a great idea to do that. Um, obviously, it's a dad. She's sort of, maybe there's sort of a semi-awareness there. Uh, we hope so. Um, so there's definitely plot lines that can, can be developed there. Um, they would have to do something with the 1960s uh, now characters because they were just there as a kind of a comedic value there was no real plot line there but if you think about it there was never the, the the most interesting shift was that we always saw gary in the 1990s going back to the 1940s and it was that direction now we see him coming from the 1940s 1960s to the 2016s um and there's that shift that the plot line would be more likely to be interesting in this direction than in that direction. If you think about it, there's quite a sort of subtle shift there. So as you can tell, I'm really keen that they make some more. I loved it. Every it was like it was like it was like seeing an old friend. That's what it was like. It was great. Um so hopefully they'll make some more. I know the cast are keen to make some more. I know a lot of people are keen that they make some more as well. Um and I would I would love to see it. Uh, so please make some more because I for one will buy the DVD I promise and uh, thank you to all the actors for being part of it and, and, and making that such a fun hour I mean that's what TV is all about you look at now there's so much good TV on now on BBC it is quite good uh, so I'm quite enjoying it and uh, I hope they make some more and uh, I always think you've got to appreciate these shows because whilst it's fun to see new shows if I could pick two to bring back it would be Waterloo Road and Goodnight Sweetheart I would you know be really happy to see them back but if any of the characters uh, actors are watching this thank you very much for making it i hope you get to make some more and make some money and uh thank you for for making what you've made so far